Welcome back. As with any large major sport, preparation being ready is one of the keys to being healthy and safe. Now, of course, with horse racing, you're adding into it an animal that pound for pound is one of the strongest in nature and also an animal for can basically get spooked at almost anything. So we talked to some of the jockeys about the things they do to prepare themselves when it comes to diet and exercise, as well as the things they do in terms of interaction, relationship with the horse, to make sure they're as safe as possible on race day. We were fortunate enough to interview a number of jockeys and talk off camera with even more of them. There were three major themes for safety on the track. Jockeys continuously mentioned the equipment, their personal health and fitness, and finally, their relationship with the horse. When it comes to a sport where pounds matter, the safety equipment must be integral but lightweight. Best one has got to be the helmet for the promotion wise, just because your head obviously needs uh, something for the impact when you fall. Because unlike any, you're not expecting when they're when you fall, you're not expecting to. It happens, and you know, and if preventable, you just have no control over it. Uh, the body protectors, um, pretty important. Um, like, obviously, it'll protect your back and well, your ribs, and um, then the helmet is probably the most important, you know, because a lot of the injuries from racing are, can be head injuries and concussion and stuff, so it's, it's important to have the right helmet. We wear helmets, we wear the, the vests uh, who help you protect you, you know, in case of a fall and somebody trample you, uh, I mean, you know, it, it reduces injuries, uh, so it does help. Uh, we, we still don't know if uh, the helmets that we're using is actually the proper helmets. Seems like we have more injuries, head injuries now than we had in the past when we used the smaller helmets. So we're still in the in the process of, you know, doing more tests uh, together with the with the uh, National Football Leagues and and other companies as well. Uh, so there are many other things that we're still trying to. Uh, to test and to know even the body protector, so if we can prove that, that it can prevent uh, any early uh, internal injuries. Uh, so there are many other things that we're hopeful that with more research and, uh, that we can eliminate, eliminate or reduce uh, more uh, injuries. You know, you see we wear helmets, we have a vest, we have what we call a flak jacket, and we wear it under our silks. We wear them in the mornings as well. As, as a helmet, we're not allowed on the track without them. And uh, they protect your, the, the chest protects you from when you go down, uh, your, your rib cage, your vital organs, stuff like that. Your head, it you know, goes without saying, it protects your head, um, your helmet. Um, besides that, we don't have a whole lot. You, you know, we have our boots, and wearing proper boots helps because uh, they keep your feet you know, in the irons, but they don't go too far in the irons. People can get hung up, they're wearing the wrong kind of shoes. They can find themselves, their feet getting stuck in an iron. And bad things can happen if your feet are stuck in irons. So little things like boots, I wouldn't necessarily call safety equipment, but having the proper equipment is going to help you do your job better. Besides that, the only true equipment we have is our helmets, our vests, and of course we have goggles to keep things from flying in our eyes and making sure we can see where we're going. They also talk about their own personal fitness, health, diet, and exercise. Well, I've always found like working out helps a lot. You know, you can fall and bounce back because you have a lot of muscle that protects you. So working out does seem like it helps in, a, in a, some sort of way to when you do go down also. So try to be very active and work out and try to keep your muscle nice and tight would probably be the best thing. Jogging, uh, work in the morning, horses, like you can go to the gym and make some little uh, light weights and you know keep yourself fit uh, to ride stronger and eat healthy trying to keep you, your weight like 115 118 whatever you want to keep it you know if you feel stronger with 118 than 115 you're gonna do better ride your horse with 118 you know like however you feel comfortable. Obviously, um, being uh, hydrated properly on race day and stuff, you know, if you have to lose weight, lose it the right way. Your cardiovascular and muscles are um, always prepared. It's easy to get tired, no matter how fit you are, but if you take some time off or you're coming from some time off or you get injured, you have to make sure that your conditioning is up to, up to par. Um, it's a very tiring job. And when you need to be there, when you need to dig, dig down deep, it's got to be there. But safety-wise, um, you have to have the strength 
to either hold a horse up or make sure you can hold a horse in a bad situation if you can if you're behind horses or whatever you have you have to have that strength when you need it so your cardiovascular i i work out every day um, you, some days i take it a little easier than others but i always try to do something whether it's jog for half an hour bike um, i do a little bit of weight training Maybe people tell you not to lift weights but that's not true if you do it the right way you can you know, build up your muscle endurance because your muscle endurance is very important when you're riding. So your legs are going to get very tired. You have to keep your a, a good foundation with your legs because without the legs, you're, there's no rider. But the biggest variable in this sport is the animal they are riding. On an animal that averages about a thousand pounds at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, the risk of injury is great. The jockeys know that the relationship and interaction with the horse may be the key to going home healthy and safe after a day at work. Well, I mean, it, it comes down to your relationship. Even though sometimes we don't know them very well, you kind of try to bond with them right away. And uh, there's just certain things that you can do by as a rider, and that's um, your posture is very important, keeping your heels down in front of you, making sure your weight doesn't get too forward, little things like that that you're taught when you start is a huge part of safety. So basically technique and doing that th do thing the right way is a huge part of it, and that's what's going to keep you safe in a lot of situations. It's already a dangerous job, no matter anything can happen. Some things we have no control over, actually most things we have no control over when it comes to injuries. But little things like that, um, your posture, you know, the way you keep your weight, and um, alert. You know, so, you know, the more you ride, the more you know um, your animal and things that can go wrong. Uh, sometimes they're telling you that they're not right, the way they feel. Um, you know, when you first start, you might not always feel when something is off, but once you start riding more, you have a better understanding of when a horse is not right. And understanding the horse is the best way to stay safe. Getting on the horse you're riding in the mornings really give you the confidence in riding them, you know, in a good way in a race. You get to know them and you know everything about them. Because a lot of horses might feel funny in the morning, but in the race they might be different. So I like to get on them in the mornings. Get into know the trainer you're riding for rather than you know just somebody putting you on a horse you never seen before feel the horse and uh before the race sometimes horses sore uh you can take off it's your life you're not gonna no matter what the trainer say you know like like you you wanna you don't wanna fall off on the race it's, it's danger and uh you feel the horse before the race if the horse feeling good just, just trying to do your best in the race and not trying to uh, ride straight and uh, save your friends. Be all, we all friends and uh, sometimes you are on a bad spot, you better think like, like quick, right away. You don't want to click heel with a horse. You don't want to make somebody on the bad spot. And uh, there's a lot of things this on the races like one minute race and you can, everything can happen. On. Except for the horses, though, you know, so it's just uh, the instance that you have and, and try to figure out how the horse act and, uh, and a little knowledge about the horses for the most part, you know. And, um, but most of the time you don't get to see the horses, at least for me, you know, traveling uh, everywhere, you don't get to see the horse until the day of the race. Uh, so you don't get to know the horse until you meet on the paddock. Uh, from then on, that's the, that's the, uh, the connections you have with the horse, see how you can get along with the horse and, and get it the proper way uh, from here, uh, from the paddock to, uh, to the gate. Um, Riding-wise, you know, it's just you got to be aware of everything that's happening in front of you um, and everybody, how they're going. Um, or it's an incident in front of you or your horse is going bad. So you have to have the, the knowledge of how your horse is feeling and how it's moving. Uh, so there's many pieces that you got to put together to, to stay safe. I mean, many, uh, many pieces, that, uh, they're very unexpected when somebody actually falls in front of you or horse breaks down, something like that. So that's unexpected. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, most of the time when somebody comes over, at least you, you see it when uh, somebody's coming over. So you try to, you know, to stay in the, in the place that, that, you know, you stay safe. But uh, most of the time, accident happens and you have no control of it. So it's more an instance than anything now. So, you know, try to, to do your best with that particular horse that you never seen before. Sean also noted that the track is important too, with the service conditions playing a big role, but also recent additions to a track to help warn of dangers and potential safety issues. They also set up some safety issues uh, thing on the track. If there's a horse that's going to be in a 
dangerous spot running throughout the race. They have a horn that they, and uh, there's a light out there to well, pull them up, pull them up, or if they can't get the starting gate moved. So they play a pretty important role when horses go down or a starting gate stuck on a muddy day. And you know, they now with the new equipment that they have to turn on an alarm and you see the lights flashing, that means pull them up races. So that's a very good safety issues because these horses sometimes they, when they, the riders fall, they go every which way. You just never know what they're going to do. Professional jockeys also want everyone to know that safety around horses does not end at the track. It's predicted that about 7 million Americans ride horses each year. With that comes some risk. It may not be the risk seen during a heated race, but rider experience is often less and the surfaces tend to be more dangerous. So before you or anyone in your family gets on the back of a horse, it's key to take a couple of safety tips, starting with the helmet. Oh, it's important that any, any kind of horse riding it's important because like most of the time you're, you're falling on your head when you get, when you get dropped. Or, so it's extremely important to wear it at all times. Basically, a helmet is number one stuff, I would say. No matter, you know, someone will tell you this horse is, is a nice horse, he's quiet, you don't, you know, certain things he won't do. Never go behind a horse, never, you know, like jerk on his mouth when he's getting on, things like that, he can flip over. Basically, don't trust the animal. Get to know them and get to understand them, work with them, rather than making them do something. Just like when you're riding a bike, it might not be cool to wear a helmet, but always wear a helmet. You never know what could happen. Um, you, an easy, small tumble could, could result in a bad tragedy if you don't have safety on, you know, gear on. Um, I've never, I never, never wore a vest when I was just pleasure riding, but it's, not, it's never a bad thing to have one. Um, you know, most, like I said, most importantly, a helmet. Always wear a helmet. Um, a vest won't hurt you. And wear your proper, your proper equipment. Wear boots. Don't, don't jump on a horse wearing hiking boots because you can get hung up in an iron and a lot of bad things can happen. You never want to get drugged by a horse. The most important thing to know when you're riding a horse, whether on the track or outside or home, is that anything can happen. They're a big, powerful animal and they, can, they get scared easily. And a, a scared horse is the most dangerous type of horse because they will do whatever it takes to get away from danger. And we can't control them when they're overcome with fear. So just be alert, know that anything can happen, and do your best to plan for it. Before you head out on horseback, listen to the professionals and promote safety with helmets, proper footwear, proper equipment for the horse, know your horse, and consider a vest, especially with those young learners. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into keeping healthy and safe here at the track. But coming up, we're going to meet once again with Team Ryan 86, Ryan Kermines, who's just finished his treatment for cancer at the University of Kentucky. We were with him when he rang the bell. More Stanton MD coming up, stay with us. As a board-certified emergency physician, Dr. Stanton is a proud member of the American College of Emergency Physicians, also known as ASEP. ASEP provides physician and evidence-based patient resources at its consumer website, emergencycare4u.org. That site has stories, fact sheets, and advice on a wide range of emergency topics. From visiting the ER to mom tips, you can find them on emergencycare4u.org. Do you own or work for a business that advances health and safety of the public or its employees? Then you may be interested in becoming a sponsor of Stanton MD. There are various opportunities for sponsorship, from the show to the website, social media, print, or a combination. For more information on becoming part of Stanton MD, contact Jen at info at stantonmd.com. That's info at stantonmd.com. Now, back to the show. 